It just got a whole lot easier to patent and trademark your intellectual property all around the world. Want to find out how? Well, stay tuned. I'm Kalila Reynolds, and it's time for another episode of Money Moves JA, brought to you in partnership with Exim Bank's Business Advisory Service, giving you the tools to grow your business. My guest today is attorney at law and partner at Duncox, Joanne Wood Rattray. She's going to tell us how to do it. Hi, Joanne. Welcome to the show. Hi, Kalilo. I love your glasses. Thank you. Very nice. Yes. So, we're talking intellectual property. We've discussed this topic a few times on this program, but there are some key updates that we all need to be aware of. What are the recent changes to the laws? Okay. The recent changes to the laws are really major, and they are, in effect, two different laws. If you understand what intellectual property is, you have patents, you have designs, you have copyright, you have trademarks. Those are the main categories of intellectual property that are protectable under the law. The changes that we're talking about are to the patents and designs and to trademarks. Mm -hmm. So in relation to patents and designs, we have an entirely new act, new legislation the old act, which is dated 1857, was repealed. Centuries old. Yeah, centuries old. And we've been waiting, I would say, well over 20 years for this new act. So it's something that we are very excited about. And um, it actually brought together two pieces of legislation. So patents and designs are now under one umbrella act. The thing that I think persons... So, so the new legislation mm -hmm. just came into effect February 2022, right? The new legislation came into effect on February 11th. Right, so it's brand, brand new. Brand new. And tell us what are the major shifts from this 1857 law to now? The major shift, one, is that it is much simpler to register a patent and also a design. But what I think that your viewers really want to hear about is that you can now register an international registration by one application. Oh. So before you registered a patent in Jamaica, mm -hmm. it was only valid in Jamaica. in Jamaica. It could only be enforced and protected in Jamaica. Now with an application in Jamaica, you have the facility to apply under the, what is the Patent Cooperation Treaty, which we are a party to, in about 155 countries around the world that are also parties to this treaty. It allows an inventor to basically file an international application in the countries that they are interested in. It's not simple. I'm not going to tell to say that it is, but it makes the opportunity of owning your intellectual property, not, not only in Jamaica, but in other countries that you might want to exploit it right. and to enforce it much. I mean, this is um, what That's is amazing. leveling the playing field for us here. That's amazing, because previously, yeah. what would you do? You'd have to file in each specific country have, individually? That, that, that's correct. You'd have to file in Jamaica, and then quite separately, you'd have to go and get perhaps an attorney in if the United States, look at the laws of uh, registering your property in that country, then quite separately you'd go to Japan, quite separately you'd go anywhere, right. uh, Barbados, Trinidad. No, you, as long as it is a country that is what, within the, that treaty, mm -hmm. then you can have the opportunity to extend your patent. One application. One application. So one set of paperwork. One set of paperwork. One yes. well, you, well? you file in Jamaica and then you have 12 months to then extend it internationally ah. to the world intellectual property so organization. I'm guessing the fee is also different though. Yes, the fees, there will be cost, but the cost that you would now be looking at would be much less than what you would have to consider if you were trying to protect, to register and protect in each country separately. Right, because you'd have to look into attorneys in each of those countries to find out this information That's, that's for correct. You. That, that is correct. And it's not, no longer necessary. And it's the same thing now with the designs. A design essentially is any composition of lines, colors, uh, three-dimensional shapes that you apply 
to an object, to you know, like handicrafts or a, a shape of a bottle. That is also now possible to be registered internationally under a different treaty, the Hague Convention, but it is a, a similar. In fact, with the designs, you don't even have to apply in Jamaica. You can go straight to an international registration if it is that is what you want. The Trademarks Act was also recently updated in It was amended. December. It was amended. Jamaica, what, what you have with trademarks is uh, the Madrid Protocol, which allows for the international registration of trademarks. Right now in 126 countries, we acceded to the protocol in December last year. We were the 110th country to come under the protocol. And um, what that allows you similarly with a national application in Jamaica for a trademark or a registration actually you can now apply for an international registration by designating any one of those countries those 126 countries to try to extend your registration and again it was a nightmare I'm telling you before for if someone wanted to register their trademarks in a number of countries to have to go to each mm -hmm. jurisdiction separately and, and deal with each as a unit. And now you will be able to apply under a single application, designate those countries. Of course, it's not automatic. Each country, similarly when persons apply and designate Jamaica, our local intellectual property office would have the right to uh, examine it and see whether it passes the requirements to be registered here. So you still have all of those hurdles to get over, but it, no, it is by one process and not by two, three, 20, depending on the number of countries that you are. Is this something that people can typically do by themselves or do they normally engage in attorney's services to do it? I wouldn't advise persons to try and do it by themselves. And I'm not, it's not that I'm saying, looking for work for attorneys, right. but it is a very technical field. You actually save yourself a lot of cost and also uh, perhaps fatal errors by getting uh, professional advice and support. So I would advise persons to consult an attorney to determine, because the first step is to determine what are we talking about? Do I have something that rises to the bar of a patent. Mm -hmm. I should also mention under the new Patent Act, there is a new intellectual property utility models for innovations. So it is for products and processes that don't rise to the level of the inventive step required for a patent, but it is innovative. And so the requirements are less stringent. That is, I think, uh, a new vehicle that a lot of our innovators and our creators would be interested in knowing about and looking into. Okay, so we need to do some more research on that utility models, a new category now. Right. So that is to, uh, to also to respond to your question that um, getting advice from the get-go is helpful. It is um, something that can actually uh, set you in the right direction that you want to go. Well, thank you so much, Joanne. This has been very useful. And I people can so. contact you how? Well, you can contact me. I'm at Don Cox, the law firm. And um, we have some very good attorneys in Jamaica, intellectual property experts. If you go to Jaipo, actually, Jaipo will help to direct you to an attorney who is experienced in the field. So that's all, also a good place to start, to go to Jaipo to say, who can help me with this? But I'm available, I'm at Don Cox, and it's something that I do every day. I get a lot of calls sometimes just from persons saying, can you give me, where am I? What is this on the right track? And mm -hmm. it's something that I'm happy to do. Well, thank you again. Very happy to have you. Yeah, it was nice to be here, Kalila. Thank you. And here's a recap of the key points. The new patents and designs legislation allows you to register internationally using just one application. 155 countries have signed on to the Patent Cooperation Treaty, PCT, which allows you to extend your patent to those countries. The cost to register your patent internationally is much less under the Patent Cooperation Treaty as you would not need to register in each country individually.
That's it for this episode of Money Moves JA, brought to you in partnership with Exim Bank's Business Advisory Service, giving you the tools to grow your business. Visit their website at eximbankja.com and check out my website, kalilareynolds.com, where you can read a summary of this episode. Let's get this money. <laughs> <laughs>